Hey folks, Grant from Primitive Stone Archery here. We're gonna talk a little bit today about the mental game. A lot of people do their shot process and they go through a process or a shooting style or whatever you wanna call it. And what they forget about is that mental application of that game. And a lot of the mental application when it comes to target panic, specifically with animals like deer, bear, moose, some of the more common uh, game animals in North America that are hunted, is that some folks just are, have not been used to being around the animals. So when an animal does show up, you know, maybe they've been hunting for an entire week and haven't seen anything, for whatever reason, there's a, that sense of urgency kicks in, right? Just to get that shot off. And what I do is I teach folks and coach folks to have a series of things they can do to mitigate some of those things. The first thing I've got to say is one of the most important aspects of dealing with the mental game is having that, you can call it surety or, um, you know, that intention with your weapon, whether it's a recurve or a longbow, a self bow, whatever you're shooting, even, even a compound, it's important to have that kind of really abject intention behind your bow. So, you know, um, what do I mean by intention? You've really got to have your game down with whatever effective range you're going to be shooting in to ensure that your arrow placement is good, right? And confidence. And that starts with what's upstairs. And if, if you have that struggle stick mentality, that will start to become a crutch for you um, for that mental prep. And, and let me elaborate on that a little bit. Um, you know, recently I had a fellow come out and said to me, hey, you know, I, I've got, you know, I'm a really good shot and uh, it's been deer season here for a month. Of course, he's been out hunting and he's had a couple of times where he's started drawing an animal and just has given up. And I said, well, actually, that's a fantastic idea that you didn't take the shot. He said, well, I feel like I gave up. I'm like, no, you didn't take the shot because you weren't confident in the shot. Well, what can I do to be more confident in the shot? I said, well, explain the shot to me. So in both incident instances, they were uh, both bucks. Um, so they were antler deer. And of course that got into his head pretty big and he's taken a few deer with a rifle at, at range, right at distance. But when it came to something coming up real close to him, like 15 yards, 10 yards, he was just like, oh my goodness, this thing's so close. And that was part of that, you know, the, that hesitation that kicked in. But the other hesitation is, was, wasn't so much in his equipment because he's a pretty good shot actually. It was the fact that he'd never taken a shot before at a live game animal with a bow. And some folks would say, hey, you know, with a recurve or a longbow. He said, just, just take the shot, get it over with, just get it, you know, break the seal. Well, the problem is, I said to him, is that you made a wise decision because you weren't positive about the shot presentation. And so he explained to me in detail what happened with both, uh, both deer that had come into him. And what had happened was simply, he said they were moving pretty quickly at a fast walk. And he said, you know, I've been told to meet the deer and have them bleat and stop. But he said, I've done that, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago and the deer took off on me. And I said, well, you gotta remember a lot of those meat videos are pretty, pretty heavily edited. And they're also hunting areas where there's an extremely high concentration of deer. So he's hunted a total of 12, 12 days, 12 and a half days here so far in time, right? Um, and our whitetail ratio here is anywhere from six to eight deer per square mile, give or take. Some people might be shocked at that, live in some places in the States. But you have to understand, we're at the northernmost range of the white-tailed deer here, and even in Ontario, and their external, like, territorial range. So, while we have a healthy deer herd, um, certainly some areas have densities that are heavier than others. Um, you could sit, you know, for a while before you see deer. <laughs> it's not, you're not guaranteed going to see something every day out here in Ontario, that's for sure. So, you know, the pressure was on him a little bit. That also added some pressure to it. You know, is, this, is this all I'm going to see? But those, those bucks were kind of starting into that chase phase of pre-rut. So they were really just kind of running around. They were youngsters that are pretty <clears throat> active and they were ambling. They were moving pretty quick. And I said, it was a good thing he didn't take a shot. It was fantastic. So he said, well, you know, you could tell there was, a, in other words, a lot of things going on in his head. He was pretty deep in the weeds. That's why I kind of going through this little explanation first. And I said to him, you know, when I, when you get a chance, I want you to start watching videos of deer that aren't being hunted, just videos that, have, you know, folks have taken observing wildlife. Start off and pick that time where you're going to make that shot on that animal. Other than your shot presentation, we've been working on, I told him. So he's like, okay, I'll do that. My point is, is this, get used to being around animals. And secondly, 
get into the mindset that this is actually extremely capable of taking, you know, this bull I've got here, this recurve, I hunt any North American big game animal with it, no problem whatsoever. I'm drawing a little, probably close to 56, 57 pounds at my draw length with this bow. Um, <clears throat> with the total arrow weight around 620 some grains, give or take with a broadhead. I have no problem at all. My point I'm trying to make is, is that I'm extremely confident in my ability, not just from my experience and my background, but because I've shot it so much that I know within my effective lethal range that, you know, my arrow placement's pretty spot on, right? You've got to have that mindset. It's, it's, it's supremely critical um, to uh, go into the field with the, you know, as much confidence in this as if you would have had a rifle in your hand within a 20, 25 yard range. That's where your head's, you know, your head should be. And it's, it's important. And a lot of folks, you know, call it struggle stick because they, you know, throw occasional arrow. Well, guess what? I've got news for you. Everybody misses, okay? The best snipers in the world miss, right? Um, you know, the best shots with, with anything, any platform, I don't care whether you're, you know, doing three gun competitions, cowboy competitions, trap, skeet, um, you know, long range marksmanship, it doesn't matter. You know, recurve, longbow, self-bow, compound, everybody misses. But the best shots in the world don't count uh, what they were doing when they missed. They focus on what they were doing when they didn't miss, when they were right, okay? They turn that around, right? So it's sort of that half empty, half full cup kind of mentality. And I encourage you to look at that too with your when you're shooting your stick bow. Don't take a look at a recurve, a longbow as a handicap. Don't do it. Look at it as you know, a close range weapon that is extremely effective in whatever effective lethal range you find. Our 12 year old this year, she's heading into the woods for the first time, she's shooting a 40 pound recurve. She's been shooting since she was two and a half years of age and she's really been groomed up to that at her own pace, which she felt comfortable at. And she's quite comfortable shooting that 40 pound recurve now. And she's really effective within 15 yards. So anything up into 15 yards that comes into her path, well, it's gonna have a rough day. She's a good shot but it's building up to that process, you know? And she said to me a couple of weeks ago, geez, dad, you know, I really wish I could poke out a little further and do this and do that. And I said, well, why? You know, think about the deer we've hunted in the last few years together, I said, sweetheart, think about it. What was our maximum range of some of those deer? She goes, I don't know, maybe, I guess we set up pretty close on those trails. I said, exactly. Why did I do that? I wanted her to observe deer close up in their environment on her normal behavior so she could get into that mindset. Right, so there was method to my madness of setting up so damn close to those runs, and we took a couple of deer. Right, so you have to remember um, it's really important um, to get into that good mental mindset, stay positive, not a struggle stick. Okay, um, you know, shoot straight. Hope that helps some folks out. Have answering a few questions about the mental game. Shoot straight and have fun. Cheers.